We've discussed how identifiers have scope and we've demonstrated this in terms of what we might think of as variables, but there are identifiers associated with functions as well. And so let's talk about scope, but in terms of functions. And Python, unlike many other languages, allows you to create functions within functions, define a function within another function. And this is actually a very powerful construct, and it opens the possibility for doing some really neat things. However, we're not going to explore those things here. We'll merely demonstrate how things behave. Let's start by saying perhaps you're in a math class and you're told there's this function g of x and it is equal to x squared plus 1. You're also told there's this other function f of x and it's equal to g of x minus 1 divided by g of x plus 1. Now assume we have to implement this function f of x in Python and there are a few ways to do it and here's one possibility. We could define f of x and now immediately within the body of this function let's define g and we could still call it x but let's give it another formal parameter name other than x. Let's call it y and this function g merely returns y squared plus 1. Now the function f of x, we want it to return g of x minus 1 divided by g of x plus 1. Okay, there is the function f of x and it has within its body another function definition. It defines g and then it uses that function. So let's see if it works. Let's try f with an argument of 2 and we get 0 0.2 and is that right? Eh, I think it's right but let's check things out by breaking down the calculation. Let's calculate the numerator and denominator. Let's try g. If we were calling f with an argument of 2 the denominator would have been g with an argument of 3 but that doesn't work. The g is local to that function we can't use g outside of f. The scope of g is within f. So it's just like any other identifier that we discussed in the previous videos. If it's defined within the function, it's just local to that function. So let's implement things a different way. Let's define a function, maybe call this f1 to differentiate it from the previous function. Still takes a single argument, x, and now Let's just directly return the function g1 of x minus 1 divided by g1 with an argument of x plus 1. Okay, Hitting return, that's perfectly fine. We don't get an error here, even though we haven't defined a function g1. And that's because we haven't called this function yet. We haven't called f1, so we haven't tried to call g1. If we did, let's go ahead and do this. Let's say f1, what do you return with an argument of 2? We get that g1 is not defined. But let's go ahead and define it. Let's define a g1 of x and it should return x squared plus 1. And now let's try again with f1 with an argument of 2. Now we get the same result as we got with that previous function f with an argument of 2. Now let's check out this calculation. What was the denominator? It was g1 with an argument of x plus 1, so that'd be 3. That says it's 10, so 3 squared plus 1, uh, that is indeed 10. The numerator would have been g1 with an argument of 1. That 1 squared plus 1 is 2, so if we take 2 divided by 10, we get 0 0.2. So f1 is behaving properly and it looked like our original f was behaving properly as well. But we will typically avoid defining functions within other functions. If we define a function within another function, we've gone through all the trouble of creating that function, but then it has local scope and no one else can use it. So instead, we would like all our functions to have global scope. 
once we define them, we can use them wherever we like. So we said that having variables defined globally was kind of a bad thing. It makes the code very hard to maintain. But when it comes to functions, having them defined globally is what is typically done. So no concern there.